batteries are dead. What are we going to do? Huh, it worked. All right, I'll admit, that's a bit of an extreme example. Who wants to plug their TV remote into the wall? Nobody. But if you're anything like me, you've got a house full of battery powered electronics and it's 2022. Battery power or battery technology, I guess, has really come a long way in the past several years. And we're still using the same AA, AAA and other size batteries that we've been using for decades now. And this is not a video about trying to move new technology, new battery technology, I guess, into old devices. This is just a good way for you to power these electronics without being stranded at home with no access to batteries. I found myself many times trying to power something simple like a TV remote or more commonly the, the kids' toys. It's uh, my son's Hot Wheels or a little stuffed animal that is motorized for one of the girls. In the past, I've made several of these adapters and I've made them custom to the device. So I've tried to find the perfect voltages and usually just use bare wires. And you'll see why that's not really ideal, uh, but it has worked and it was a good proof of concept. And that's why I've decided to make this into a little bit safer, uh, more practical thing for us to use. And today that's what I'm gonna show you. So the first thing you're gonna need is if you head over to your junk drawer, well, I have a junk drawer in my house. Um, if you have a closet or something, wherever you keep all your electronic junk, you want to find a, uh, a power adapter or wall wart, whatever you would call it. Uh, it's just a, it's a transformer. This in particular is a switching adapter. It says it works uh, 100 to 240 volts and it outputs 2.4 volts. It's called a switching adapter just because it switches the AC electricity coming in and turns it into DC electricity going out, which is perfect because batteries are DC electricity and that's what many of these portable electronics use for power. So you don't exactly have to pull out your microscope to read the back of these things. I can read it fine, but I want it to be clear to you guys as well that it's very important that you make sure the output is very close in the voltage requirement that your electronics needs. So if you've got a remote that has two AA batteries, at 1.5 volts each, then that means you're gonna need about three volts. And you need to make sure that the voltage is very close to what it would require on battery power. And with that being said, I put it under my microscope so you could read it clearly here. It's a switching adapter and the input 100 to 240 volts, like I stated earlier, and the output is 2.4 volts and 800 milliamps. Some sort of connector, this is, I don't even know what this went to, to be honest with you. And that's actually the best adapter to use for this project. Because if it's something that you're gonna be using regularly, you don't wanna do this. It's gonna require cutting these wires and splicing them to other parts. So I'm gonna take the end that I don't need anymore and use my trusty Leatherman promise shears to cut this off. Now, with that being done, let's strip these wires. I'm gonna take my pocket knife and strip these wires down so we can see what we're working with. Now, if you're lucky like me, yours will have, uh, you can see it, red and black wires. Red's positive, black's negative. You're not always gonna be this lucky, but sometimes you can even look on the back of the transformer and it will show you. This one has a little icon showing me which side of the original connector was the positive and negative. And sometimes you can match that up. I'm gonna strip these two wires down so that some of their metal is showing. All right, and now I have my two stripped wires with some exposed wire and also a little bit of the insulation left so I can still tell which side was positive and which side was negative. The next thing you need for this project is not really a necessity, but it's something that I prefer. This is definitely not sponsored, but um, I found these a few years ago. They're called Spoby, Sp Spooby, Spoby. I, I don't know what they're called. They're um, 
Solder and seal connectors is what they say, but they're really handy. I'm going to show you a larger one just so you can see it. It's basically shrink wrap uh, or shrink tube, I guess, but it has a little bead of solder in the middle. So you'll be able to stick both bare wires in each side and then you heat it up and it seals it all together and creates your connection at the same time. So highly recommend these. Uh, just because of personal preference, all the electronic projects I do around the house, I use them. It's a 120 piece set. There's a link down below, Amazon affiliate link. You don't have to buy them. I'm not being paid to say this. Just letting you know something that I use and I like to use. So that's going to be in this project to save me a lot of trouble. And the next thing I have is a set of alligator clips. There's a link down below for these as well. The ones I got off Amazon. This pack was $6. I believe it was $6 and it comes with two red and two black leads. I chose these because they have long pigtails, so I can extend these as far as I need to, just in case it was a shorter transformer I was going to be working with. And then another thing, actually I got three sets in this pack. So another thing that I chose these for is because the alligator clips themselves have rubber protectors on them. So if you don't have these connected to anything, they're not going to touch together and short out causing you issues or a possible fire. So make sure you get them with the protectors. It's not much more money and it's definitely worth it. The next thing you'll want to do is take your alligator clips, your pigtails, and if they're not already stripped, go ahead and strip those down as well, just like you did before. And now I have stripped wires that are red and black for my alligator clips. So the final part of this project comes with connecting your transformer to your alligator clips. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to go through it with you though. Uh, some of you may have seen this coming by now, but here we go. All right, now I've securely soldered both of those ends. We end up with a transformer that has alligator clips on the other end. Now that the project's complete, we can take these alligator clips and clip them onto the positive and negative side of any battery powered electronic that requires three volts. And this will give us wall power so we don't have to use batteries anymore. Now I know it's a bit ridiculous. You don't want to plug your TV remote into the wall, but in a pinch, this will get you through until you can go to the store tomorrow. Before we go test this out, this is a good time for me to remind you that only about 7% of my viewers are subscribed to the channel. So it'd help me out a lot if you'd go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And go ahead and give the video a thumbs up if you think this is a good idea. If you don't, let me know in the comments below. Or if you found a solution that works better, let me know. I do know that during my research I found there are batteries that have a transformer attached to them now. Amazon sells kits like this that are about $25 for AA batteries, I believe. I haven't tried any of those, but I'm sure they'll work in the same way. So if you prefer to just buy a pre-made option, that's something there for you. I'll try to remember to link one of those down below as well. All right, I've moved into the floor because I want to demonstrate how this thing works. So I've got our completed cable here. It's a little messy right now, but if you straighten it out, you can see the splices that I made. Show them to you up close. If I can get it to focus uh, it's the uh, shrink tubing and they're soldered together nice strong connection and we've got our two leads right here at the end so instead of the TV remote that I was going to use initially I decided to go with something a little larger this is the Hot Wheels uh, I don't know what you'd call it really but it spins and shoots the Hot Wheels car down the track uh, I chose this just because it takes large C batteries and it'll be easier for me to show you where these leads go to make this thing work. So if you look in here closely you can see the positive and negative markers showing which direction you want to put the battery in. We're going to use those markers to know where to place our positive and negative leads that we've already created. So I'm going to take my positive and negative the springy side on this particular device is going to be my negative. So I'm just gonna open an alligator clip and clip it right there on the spring. Just like that. 
And then I'll take the positive side, which is red, open it up, and clip it right there on the, uh, let me get a better clip. I'm going to clip it right here on the positive side. Okay. Now we have the positive clipped and the negative clipped on. And then it's as simple as taking the other end of this and just plugging it into the wall. So you can see there's no batteries in here, but when I turn it on, these wheels begin spinning and it's working as it's supposed to. So I know it's pretty simple, but these things sure are handy to have around the house. So go ahead and make a few for yourself and let me know how it works out in the comments below.